And a lot of people might think that Game Pass is just an Xbox flag waving thing, but guess what? It doesn't really even have to do with Xbox. I did not care about Game Pass when it first came out. I just don't care what's on Game Pass. I would rather pay 60 bucks for a quality game. There's nothing worth trying on it to me. Have you heard anyone say that before? Cause I have, hell, I actually said all three of those. Stick around to the end of this video cause there's some really good material for you there. I'm gonna link you some really nicely put takes on things about Game Pass and how it impacts developers, players, and kind of like journalism. And if you've been to this channel more than once, why not subscribe? I'd like to build game hype here. For context, I have been an Xbox gamer ever since, I would say the 360. I've owned an original Xbox, but the 360 is when I really started to get into the platform. And when Game Pass was announced, I thought it was a neat concept, you know, to be able to play multiple games, but I already had them. I already had certain Halos. I already had Gears, and I didn't really care to try anything else on it. It was just a catalog of games I personally didn't care about. I wanted to buy the games that I actually wanted, and most of those weren't really Xbox first party stuff. And even if they were, a part of me kind of likes the idea of owning that thing to play it. Yes, over time, Xbox was doing some really cool stuff like acquiring lots of awesome studios like Ninja Theory and Expulsion Games, Playground and Undead Labs and so on and making their own. That was cool to see. And knowing that, you know, the idea that these guys might be able to be a part of Game Pass was intriguing. But for now, I just didn't really care. Like. I don't know, I, I already have the games I wanna play and if I wanna play a game, I'll just buy it. But there was a problem and that was that I'm a broke ass gamer. And no, that's not what the real value of Game Pass is. Cause even if I had it, there's just too much on it that I'll probably never get to. That's another thing I hear people say. There's just too many games on Game Pass. I'm not gonna play them all. I only, you know, care to play one or two of them and then everything else, I don't know, I'll probably never even get to. It wasn't until I figured out this crazy deal of an exploit that Xbox was offering first time Game Pass people. If you buy two or three years of Xbox Live Gold, you can upgrade it for free or more specifically a dollar to make that two or three years of Xbox Live Gold turn into Game Pass Ultimate. That blew my mind. So that's what I did. I bought like nearly three years of gold, upgraded to Game Pass Ultimate, and now I have Game Pass Ultimate until like late, next year. I am a Gears fan and I got it just in time to finally play Gears 4 before Gears 5. I never really got to play Gears 4. I wasn't that interested to do so, but then I'm like, ah, I have it on Game Pass. I might as well try it. In fact, I can actually get Gears 5 now. Holy crap. I don't have to buy either of them actually. Yeah, I wasn't motivated to buy these, but hey, let's try them out. That was the beginning of me actually starting to realize the potential of Game Pass. Games I never considered playing started to enter my perspective and just having them at my fingertips because they're there. I started to remember how much praise Hellblade got back at the Game Awards of 2017, I think. It was just a game that seemed to have a great narrative and great performances and all that stuff. And Xbox just bought them, so I probably should check this out. And now I got to experience what is, in my opinion, the best performance I have ever seen in a game. I had no intention of playing Humans Fall Flat or Sea of Thieves. They were just two games that I didn't feel like I would be compelled to buy. And yet I tried them out and got to have a lot of good laughs with friends playing them. And because they had Game Pass Ultimate, I went over to the PC Game Pass to check that catalog and my kind of gateway into PC gaming was Undertale. I see Undertale is on that catalog. I had no interest. I didn't care to play Undertale. I saw that it was a big cult classic and people were talking about it like crazy and the soundtrack is great and blah, 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 but I didn't really care to play it. But because it was there, I did. In my opinion, probably the best indie game I've ever played. My friend kept gushing and talking about this game called Outer Wilds. And after always seeing him on it and talking about it with me, I see it's on Game Pass. That's how he's playing it. So I'm like, all right, I'll give this a shot. And yes, it came onto my radar because of my friend, but I would have never actually considered buying the game for myself to try it out or whatever. But it was on Game Pass, so I gave it a shot. Maybe one of my favorite games of all time. If you don't see this trend here, it's that there's all these games that I just didn't have interest or a big care to try out, but I did because they were just there for me to try. Hell, I've never been that into the Final Fantasy series. Yes, Kingdom Hearts is like 
one of my two favorite games ever. But then XO19, they announced a lot of Final Fantasy games are coming to Game Pass. I have like three or four of them downloaded. The Yakuza series, basically every one of them is now on Game Pass. And I have a buddy that has spent way too much time in Monster Hunter World, and I am terrified to ever touch that. But I can, because Monster Hunter World is on Game Pass too. I didn't care about Game Pass at first. It just seemed like there was a lot of games I had no interest to play and didn't feel like paying the subscription for it. I know what I want and I'll just get that game. But the thing is, <laughs> games are expensive. They are, you know, if it's an indie game, maybe it'll be like 20 bucks. If it's a full AAA one, it's 60 bucks. And I had this budget of only getting two to four games a year. I don't even usually need more than two or four games a year. That usually quenches me. And then 2019 was the first full year I had Game Pass. And I played more games that year than I ever have. I went from playing two to four games a year for 240 bucks to 17 games for 180. Actually, it's less than 180 because I just upgraded the whole <laughs> the Xbox Live Gold situation. So it's actually less than that. There's no longer this barrier of I can't afford these games. I, I, I don't want to try that game because I don't feel like paying the money for it. You know, like I actually can just try whatever I feel like from this huge ass catalog. But then there's the another complaint I hear folks say, I want to support developers. I want to support developers. I want to buy their product that gives them more money. Whatever Game Pass is doing, it's working for developers and publishers alike. Folks get to try games on Game Pass and if they don't finish them, when it leaves Game Pass, they just buy it. I play Minecraft Dungeons because that's a first party title on Xbox and I've been buying basically all the DLC because I have the spare cash and I tried out the base game and enjoyed it enough to feel the need to do so. Games that have microtransactions have a bigger player base now because they're on Game Pass and a lot more people get to access the game and therefore there's bigger potential marketplace. And the like now 23 studios that is under Xbox Game Studios has first party backing that is from a company that has triple the value that Disney has. Hell, Microsoft gave Xbox the, you know, the money to buy and make these deals with two huge ass publishers. EA Play is now included on Game Pass for you to play an additional 100 freaking games like Jedi Fallen Order, which was nominated for like best action adventure of the year. The Madden games, Mass Effect. I've recently been experiencing Mass Effect because I never have before. And Titanfall 2, I got to play that. And that's now like one of my favorite first person shooter campaigns I've ever played. And of course the biggest acquisition I would say in the gaming industry that is like most noteworthy is Bethesda. Bethesda is now like a Xbox publisher that is under their wing. And that brought all their IPs and studios to the Game Pass. And they are now in that thing of being the day one launches. Elder Scrolls day one for free through Game Pass, which is insane. I don't even wanna say Xbox anymore. I just wanna say Game Pass, cause that's especially what I'm talking about here. And do not think this is just Microsoft buying out everyone and throwing their money around and just acquiring all these developers and publishers and stuff. And that's kind of screwing them over. No, they're actually starting to want to join this service. Square Enix is launching their big AAA game Outriders day one on Game Pass. That already happened actually. But yeah, it was a day one launch for PlayStation and Xbox, but PlayStation, you have to buy the full price of the game. Xbox, you're, you get it with Game Pass. And listen to this, a Sony interactive entertainment game a Sony exclusive title is not only MLB The Show, I'm talking about MLB The Show, and it is not only coming to Xbox day one at launch, it is a day one Game Pass title. And so again, you could pay 70 bucks to play on a PlayStation day one, or you could get it included with your subscription on Xbox. Sorry, Game Pass. For Square and Sony slash MLB to do those decisions, that has to say something. Indie developers are craving to be on this system. They just did a showcase of tons of games that are going to be premiering on Game Pass. That's what you want as an indie developer. You want to be put on the map and yes, be funded, but especially for you to have a player base to show, hey, look what we're capable of if the players like your game. Game Pass provides security for smaller developers and publishers. Game Pass gives bigger games a chance to build their player bases. But most of all, Game Pass gives you, the player, the ability to discover your next favorite game. 
It's not about being an Xbox bra and just playing Halo, Gears, and Forza. It's about you trying out games you thought you would never be interested in. But turns out, you actually really like it. It's about finding a new genre of games that you never thought you'd actually like. It's about discovering new developers because you played their game, really liked it, and now you have a new developer to keep your eye on. Game Pass is not about waving an Xbox flag or saving money. Game Pass is about discovering your next favorite game. They use that in the marketing, but the reason they say that is because you can go like I was, just playing two or four games a year that you intended to play for that much money, or with that same amount of money, play like 17 games, which the three or four are ones you already intended anyway. Those extra dozen, you just get to find out. Somebody that was a PlayStation Nintendo guy now becoming an Xbox person. Also developers revealing how Game Pass is really helping them and a raw media journalist explaining the insanity of the whole thing. These are three videos on screen that I highly recommend you check out if this wasn't enough for you. It's really well put together stuff. They're not my videos. I'm just plugging them in because I just want to make the case that Game Pass is truly a game changing thing in this industry. But if you enjoyed this, leave a like and also let me know your thoughts on Game Pass. Thanks for watching.